from Anchored in Faith Gospel Church in Oxford, Iowa. This is Anchored in Faith. Praise God. We are a continuation on the resurrection for all. But last time we stopped over in 59, continuation here. Matt through the 26th chapter. Matt through the 26th chapter, verse 59. Praise God. Praise God. If the Lord says the same, we won't be standing before you too long, but we're going to do what God wants to be done. Amen. Praise God. We're still talking about the resurrection for all. Praise God. Now the chief priests and elders and all the, the council saw false witness against Jesus to put him to death. And of course, you got this court of chief priests and elders, uh, leaders of the people there in the council, trying to find a false witness to put Jesus to death. Have any of you have been through something where a false witness had to arise? But let me remind you, if a false witness arrives, there need to be two witnesses. Amen. One witness won't be good enough. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we know in the law, there was a law of witnesses. Uh -huh. That you have had at least two people yeah. Yeah. to come up and for, and in order for that witness to be legit. You had to have at least two people to come up. And they would not allow you to come with one. Let's move into it. Fault witnesses did not arrive at this time. Couldn't find no one, but you would find out. Look at verse 60. But found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. Look at what happened. And at the last came two false witnesses. Witnesses. Satan sent two false witnesses along. Now you know it's you got to have somebody to gain to be with you. It takes two to tangle. You need someone. Uh, Satan always has to have at least someone to to be a witness with him. And you see right here in this message here where there uh, become here, here comes two false witnesses. Praise God that come to testify against Jesus Christ. Let's go into sixty first verse. And said, this fellow, he was talking about Jesus, this fellow, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. Let's go first to uh, Deut Deuteronomy. Let's go to Deuteronomy 19, 15. We're talking about a law of witness. Praise God. Let's read it. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin in any sin that he sinned. At the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. Now that's a law of witness. Just want to throw that out to you. Praise God. Jesus, the people were saying, in other words, in the natural, it took us 46 years to build a temple, and you said you would tear it down in three days. Uh -huh. This man calls himself a God. A God. But Jesus Christ was not, did not talk, wasn't, this wasn't a reference. Jesus Christ was talking about his resurrection. Jesus Christ was talking about his body was a temple. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Will, be, will be resurrected in three days. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Moving on. Look at verse 62. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answer thou nothing? Jesus knew the law. He wasn't going to answer. He knew what the law was and what, what the situation of the law was. And sometimes it's good to be silent. How I many of you know sometimes you get, you need to shut your mouth because someone will always try to accuse you. But if you don't say nothing, they have no rights. So you take their rights away from them. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Sometimes we, it's hard to keep your mouth shut. Can I hear you? Yes, I don't hear, see no one out there with angels' wings on. Sometimes it's hard to keep your mouth shut. Yeah. <laughs> when you got people accusing you in all areas of falseness. 
Every day you see someone try to accuse you in some way. And we all experience this in our life. Where you have someone going to lie on you. And I say it in some early messages. Satan, Satan is a professional liar. He's a pro. He was a liar from the beginning. And he gets into people. He, he enters into people. He covenant with people. And they agree with him. And the lion spirit enter into people. And they come to be, have a false report. And, and they will accuse you falsely. But we have to be in prayer. Like we'll say it this morning. We have to stay in prayer. We have to fast and pray that we won't enter into some of these temptations that come against us. Amen. Praise God. And I rejoice because God has saved my bacon so many times. I rejoice. I mean, you know, he saved you. He saved me last week. Praise God. I'm a testimony. He saved me. Oh, Jesus' name. I got to say what, what my testimony is. How good he is. Okay. Now we got that out of the way. <laughs> okay. Verse 62. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answer thou nothing. What is it which these witnesses against thee? But Jesus held his peace. And the high priest answered. And said unto him, I jure, or I give an oath. Can you give an oath thee by the living God that thou tell us where to thou be the Christ, the Son of God? This was a prophecy that was fulfilled and spoken by Isaiah. Look at over, uh, you can go to this in your leisure time. Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, verse 7 chapter, verse 7 is a prophecy that was spoken before Jesus came on scene. Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, verse 7. He didn't say a word. Praise God. As he was as though a lamb that went before his slaughter, to be slaughtered. He didn't say a word. Because he looked at you and I. Through the scope of time, he saw us that we needed to a savior. Amen. And Jesus Christ died on the cross just to save someone like you and I. Amen. That's why I rejoice. I don't care how people look at me. Yeah. They think I'm crazy, whatever. Think whatever you want to, but I rejoice Amen. today in the name of Jesus Christ. I know he has brought me out of many trials and tribulations and tests. Where the enemy thought he had me, Jesus Christ made me a survivor. How many of you are a survivor today? Raise your hand and just say, praise God. Hallelujah. I am a survivor today. Hallelujah. Praise God. This was fulfilled because when a true prophet said things, it's happening. It's happening, people. It's happening. And we look into society today, we um, see so many false prophets that tell you what you, what you want to hear. Tell you what, what your flesh wants to hear. They want to mm -hmm. make you feel good in your flesh. Mm -hmm. People have the audacity to own. They also want to pay people to, to, to be a palm, to pay palm readers. Tell me something good. Tell me a good future of what my future holds. But I tell you, I beg you the difference. I do not put my trust in man. I, I put my trust in God. How many of you know you put your trust in God? Amen. A true and living God that do not lie. Amen. Praise God. He fulfills his word in us. Praise God. Jesus Christ. There's another reference I want you can go to at your leisure time uh, over in Psalms 16.10 that Jesus Christ was resurrected bodily. Psalms 16.10. Praise God. Move on down. We don't want to get stuck here. See, there was a law, and we know it was a law here, and I don't want to get too deep into the message. The law always was there in this message here because when a person said he's a God, that he declared he's a God, that's a, a law to say he's blaspheming. And they didn't want to stone you to death. How many of you know that in the law, you can be stoned to death. Can I hear you? If you claim to be a God or something like that. They will stone you. Kill you. Everyone in that area will pick up a stone and poosh. To your deceased. That was one of the laws. 
Amen. Jesus Christ, time was not up yet, so he held his peace. Um, he wasn't scared of anything, but he knew his time wasn't up. And that goes for us as true believers. We cannot be scared of the tactics of Satan. We cannot be scared and fearful of his attacks. Fear tactics that he used to intimidate you. But we must stand on God's word and know and declare his word. Speak it out loud in the midst of a crooked generation that we live in. Speak the word out loud in your prayer time. Speak it out back to God and God will answer you. Because his word, he will not turn his back on his word. Amen. Because his word is faith. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Thank God for everyone that have the faith to know that Jesus is Lord. The resurrection is for all. All right, moving on to the next. Verse 64, and Jesus said unto him, thou hast said, you answered yourself. Nevertheless, I say unto you, hereafter, Jesus is foretelling them something. For hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, which is there now, and coming in the clouds of heaven. Jesus was foretelling them of his death, burial, and resurrection, and how he will go down. And to Hades and defeat Satan. And to bring out those captured souls that was held against their own will. Down on the, in the heart of the earth. And brought them out into the, to the heavens, to the glorious city. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. And then they, we have a confirmation that Jonah was in the whale belly for three days and three nights. Amen. Praise God. That's a little paralyzation here. Okay. Look at verse 65. Then the high priest rent or tore his clothes. To me, he was, he was upset. He was, he was angry. And that this man declared himself as a God. He got mad. Saying he has spoken uh, blasphemy. He's blasphemed. Amen. He said, now what further need have we uh, witnesses? Well, now we don't need no witness. We have heard it all. We heard this man declare out of, his, out of his own mouth that he's the son of God. We heard it for ourselves now in this court. We have heard it. Now we have no need of a witness. Let me tell you, you as a true believer, do not cower down. And you continue to declare that you are a child of the king. Amen. Do not let the enemy intimidate you to make you compromise and say that you are not a child of the king. But you stand yes. firm. Yes. Stand. Yes. Oh, my Jesus. Thank you. Stand because people will test you out on small matters. If you're a real minister or something, uh -huh. can this be allowed? Uh -huh. Tempting you. Yeah. Can you go over there and play in a card game? Uh -huh. I'm just giving you examples. Can you go out in a club? Yeah. That's your thing. Amen. Do what you want to do. Uh -huh. I ain't going to tell you what to do. Yeah. That's on you, but I tell you the truth, but the word of God is true. Amen. Amen. I got this word. What you got? Yeah. 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 Praise God. The word of God is what I dwell, I live by. Because Jesus said in the word, we do not live by bread alone, by the natural, but we live by the word of God. Amen. We need this. The high priest, man, the big shot here, just ripped his clothes. Talking about Jesus was blaspheming. Do we, what witness, do we need a witness? No, we don't need no witness. We don't need no one. We heard the blaspheming. Look at 56. What thinking ye? They answered and said, he is guilty of death. Uh -huh. They had made the decision here that Jesus Christ was guilty. There is a reference over in Leviticus 24, 16. You can read that in your leisure time. Praise God. I want to go back up to 65 just a little bit and expound on something. Um, when the high priest ripped his clothes, he's, he's, he said he spoke blasphemy. Now, there was a reference over in St. John, the 10th chapter, verse 30 through 36. 
his statement is in the word of God is saying, I and my father are one. There also is another reference over in St. John 17, 11. You can read that in your leisure time. Talking about God. Jesus is God. They are the same. Yes. We teach that in here that there's only one Lord. Only one faith. Only one baptism. Because people seem to get confused now. They want to put in the status that there's three gods, but there's only one, on, only one Lord, only one faith, and that's the faith in Jesus Christ, Amen. and one in baptism, and it came through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way. Yes. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh -huh. And no man will come to the Father but through me or by me. That's John, St. John 14, 6. Okay, let's get on down here. Verse 67. Then they spit in his face. And this is very disrespectful. This was a disrespect. Someone is spitting in your face. Yeah. Right now, it's the same thing. We don't take it. Are you willing to take it? You got to turn your cheeks so many times. And that's the thin line right here. I know the word of God said, vengeance is mine. God said he will repay. Yeah. And sometimes we feel like doing a little vengeance. But we have to move our hands and put them on our side. And let God be God. Let the Lord do this separating how many of you know it's coming a time where wheat and terror shall be separated? God knows the difference. Sometimes we can't tell. It's so close. It looks so much alike. Wheat and terror look so close. Just alike. But you got to let them go, grow together. You, let, you let, them, let them move. Let them move. Let them stay in there. And, and it will be revealed sooner or later because one of the things I know for sure the word of God says is you know people by their fruit they bear. And let me tell you, when you got an apple tree, it should be bearing apples. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> when you got an orange tree, it should be bearing oranges. But if you see something different, something is wrong there. Uh -huh. Amen. If I'm in a family and I'm showing some attributes of somebody else's family, somebody has crossed something up here. Go, Something's wrong. If I can't, sh cannot show attributes of my own dad, something. It's wrong. Yeah. I have taken on another father. Yeah. Uh -huh. And people today got to be careful not to take on another father. Right. I take on Father God. I don't take on Lucifer. Right. Yeah. We just cast him away yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. How many of you know you got power in the name of Jesus to cast Satan away? Yeah. Amen. You have power to bind Satan and to loose yeah. that which belongs to you. Yeah. Loose him and let him go. Loose her and let her go. How many of you got some family members you're going to say, Satan, loose her. Loose him. Let him go. They don't belong to you. They belong to me and God. Hallelujah. God said he will never lose no one. But we must understand something. We have a choice to make. Mm. Mm. Every person you can say have to work out their own soul salvation with fear and tremor. That's an individual thing where everyone have come to a point of acknowledgement who God is. God is not false. You got to come to a point to know God is true a God. But how can we relay this message? It yet to be seen. Some people still won't believe that God is God. You can give them every reference. You can try to convince them in every way. But they are still hell bent yes. Yes. to do it their way. They are still hell bent to do things the way they want to do. But you have told them you have been released. Can I hear someone as a witness today that when you have told people what thus said the Lord, you're released. People might not like how you look, might not like those statues, so be it. You must speak what thus said the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
It don't make no difference how you look. And they couldn't even tell who Jesus was because he had to have a kiss. Jesus had to do a, a betrayal kiss. And they took him then. And they took him. How many of you know it don't make no difference how you look in your statue today? today. Your statue don't mean nothing. But God can choose you. He can use you. I said God chooses you. He can use you. And people want to get mixed up on titles. All this is in vain. But what we do for the Lord is going to last forever. What we do for Christ will last. Your works of the flesh can be burned up. If you don't do them for the glory of God, they will be just diminished. They will be burned. Serious business. And I don't want my works to be burned. I know some of them might not make it, but I'm believing God to the maximum that by the grace of God. Oh, it's a grace, people. It's grace that we will make it into the kingdom. Amen. But I trust in God. Let's move to another level here. Oh, Jesus, thank you. They spit in his face. They buffeted him. They beat him. And others smote him, struck them, struck him with the palms of their hands. And some reference said with rods, struck him. Saying, prophesy unto us, thou Christ. I'll give you a reference. They blindfolded him. They put a blindfold on him. Look over and, and uh, you can read this at your leisure time. St. Mark 14, 65. They blindfolded him and then saying, prophesy to me. They were making all kind of mockery of Jesus Christ. He did it all for you and I. The resurrection. We are leading up to this resurrection. It was for all people. God has no respect of person. He has no distinct person or race, creed, or color that he chooses. He chooses those that will yield surrender. Those that are willing and obedient. They should eat of the good of the land. He chooses those that say, yes, Lord, here I am. You notice the disciples early in some of these messages. Jesus called them. They had to give up something. They had to give up something to be a disciple. They had to leave some things behind. How many of you know sometimes you got to leave some things behind in order to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? And I don't want to get off the message too much and too long. Okay, let's get back to it. Prophesy to us. Who it is that hits you? Verse 69. Now Peter Set without in the palace. And a damsel came unto him saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. We're talking about the denial of Peter. But he denied before them all saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out to the porch, another maid saw him and said unto him, that were there. This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. Verse 72. And again he denied with an oath. I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said unto Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thou speech betrayest. I'll be way at thee. Now, this is a, one of the things is when you've been chosen you, by God, you got a mark on you that you cannot erase. You got a certain anointing on you that you might not can see it, but other people can see it. Something different about that person. But sometimes people don't want to recognize that. How many of you remember a situation where something was revealed to Peter? Jesus said this will reveal not by flesh and blood, but from the power of God reveal it. Sometimes people don't want to see you because they call you a threat when you're a child of the king. Satan called you a threat. 
because you are threatening the, the kingdom of darkness. When you accepted Jesus Christ and you was, became a disciple, you became a threat to the kingdom of Satan, to the kingdom of darkness. And I don't care today how he rages against me, how he's upset with me because I chose Jesus Christ. I still will stay with that. Until the day I close my eyes in death. I don't know how long I will be on this side. No one knows. And no one knows how long they will be here in this area. But right now, as my former pastor used to say, I'm going to make a home run for Jesus Christ. I'm going to hit that ball over the fence for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Peter was denying that Jesus, he was with Jesus Christ. And again, he denied, I do not know the man. And after a while, and after a while came they unto him, they that stood by and said unto Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thou speech betrayed. I'll be way at thee. Then began he to curse. Now his language changed. He began to curse and swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew or the rooster. Three times he denied. Jesus foretold him this when he was going through the Garden of Gethsemane and all these areas before he was uh, went through the cross and all that. Jesus told him that you would deny me. Then that rooster going to crow. That's going to be your sign. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amen. That's going to be the alarm to you. I told you so. <laughs> you've been through something and somebody told you and, and said yeah. Holy Spirit I told you yeah. they told you didn't they yeah. didn't they tell you that yeah. it happened yeah. it came to pass yeah. hallelujah so we it's you know our flesh always going to be a fight I'm going to tell you as Christians true believer the spirit and the flesh always going to fight but we must learn how to crucify the flesh yeah. <laughs> this is it Got to eat more of the word of God. That's all there's to it. Right here. Eat it. Sleep it. Yeah. Whatever it takes. Uh -huh. Stay with it. Yeah. Stay with the word of God. Because Jesus Christ did it all on Calvary. Yeah. For us. The resurrection was for all. As we lead up to this last point, we will get through some more series but we praise God right now we thank him for the resurrection Peter remembered what Jesus told him that he would deny him and this came to pass how many of you know thank God for Jesus Christ resurrection for it is finished whatever you in your life need it is finished whatever you need God to do for you it's already done it is finished Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, PO Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322 or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa.